Welcome to Amplified Houston on 90.1 FM KPFT Pacifica Radio. You can listen at 89.5 FM in Galveston, 89.7 in Huntsville, and KPFT is also streamed live at kpft.org. Amplified Houston is a collaboration of five nonprofit organizations, Baker Ripley, Boys and Girls Club of Greater Houston, Children at Risk, the Houston Food Bank, and the YMCA of Greater Houston, along with listener-supported commercial-free radio KPFT. KPFT is Houston's community media station. My name is Pearl Koholis, and I'm with the Houston Food Bank. Our first segment will feature Chris Diaz of Spay Neuter Assistance, or SNAP. SNAP works to prevent the suffering and death of companion animals and to enrich the human-animal bond by providing excellent, accessible, and affordable spay, neuter, and veterinary care. Our second guest today will be Kelly Klein of Easter Seals Greater Houston. Easter Seals is leading the way to full equity, inclusion, and access by enriching education, enhancing health, expanding employment, and elevating community. So we're going to get right into our first segment. We'll welcome Chris Diaz of SNAP. Hi, Chris. Welcome to the show. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for being with us. So starting with the important thing, why is spaying or neutering a dog or cat important? Yeah, so um, there are many benefits to spaying um, your pet. So um, for instance, for females, um, the early spaying reduces the risk of mammary tumors and preventing other health problems such as life-threatening uterine infections. Uh, spaying prevents accidental litters, which can be costly to care for and often end up in homelessness or um, euthanasia. As uh, for spaying for a male, in addition to the prevention of accidental impregnation resulting in unplanned and often unwanted litters of puppies and kittens, your male will be calmer, less inclined to mark territory by spraying, uh, less likely to run away from home and less likely to bite other animals or humans. Um, of course, neutering also prevents testicular cancers. So there's a lot of health benefits and behavioral benefits to staying and neutering your pets. Wow. So it's not just accidental litters. I, I think, I mean, I'm, at least for me, I always thought it was just so that they don't have accidental litters. Um, and then we would also prevent, you know, lots of other little dogs and cats running around, but there are health <laughs> benefits too. So I learned something new today. Oh, well, I'm glad to have shared that. Yeah, I know when I first joined um, the animal welfare um, community, it was something that I learned too. Um, I did not know that um, yeah. male dogs can have testicular cancer in cats or um, uterine infections. Things like that. So, yeah. Had no idea either. So happy to know that now and glad that we've shared that with, with our listeners. For for pet owners who say that they don't want to spay or neuter because it might be painful to their animal or harm them, um, what would be your response to that? Um, yeah, so what I would say is that the homeowner urges that can come with pets, um, make them more anxious, make them more prone to behaviors which are desirable to, to their humans. Um, pets often create a closer bond with their humans once hormones are eliminated. Mm -hmm. And for uh, female pets, pregnancy is also uh, is very difficult. It's stressful and can potentially cause serious health issues and even death. Oh wow! So it would, I guess, the benefits would outweigh just that initial yeah, initial yeah. pain when when they go through the procedure. Um, is there an optimal age in which a dog or cat should be spayed or neutered? Right, that's a great question. So um, it is. Um, you know, we do provide uh, pet surgeries for up to four months of age is usually where we start off at. Mm -hmm. um, we don't necessarily have an image or we still recommend for adult dogs and cats, even those in mature age, to be spay or neutered um, as there are still many benefits to staying and neutering at a later age. Age does not necessarily mean that the pets will have a higher risk um, during surgical procedure. However, the possibility of underlying medical condition and comorbidity can be increased with age. Um, medium to advanced age animals can benefit from pre-screening to look for potential underlying conditions that can increase the risk of surgical complications. Uh, we recommend having blood work done for all of our pets at a full service veterinary clinic for animals um, ages five or older. 
um, SNAP does provide surgeries to puppies and kittens beginning, um, of course, at the age of four months again. Mm -hmm. It is highly recommended our, our pets, um, female pets be spayed, um, dogs and cats to be performed before their pet has reached their first heat cycle. Oh, I see. So does that mean um, they should they don't need to have at least a litter, at least for females before they are spayed? Yes, that is correct. I know that's a common um, misconception that pets uh -huh. will have to have their first heat cycle. It's actually recommended that we do not let the pet go through their first heat cycle to prevent, again, some of those um, hormonal um, issues to occur that will that could possibly cause health issues. So before we get to that stage, we'd like to go ahead and nip it in the bud. Wow. So I guess the, the earlier, the better. Yes, that um, is correct. Okay. What about, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, personality changes um, of the animal. Um, can you go into the male animal's personality changes as a result of being neutered? Because we talked about, you know, uh, mm -hmm. females. Yes. So um, usually with our males, um, they do become calmer. Mm -hmm. um, they're less inclined to mark um, and, and spray their territories for cats, uh, which I know is very much needed sometimes in some of the homes. Some of our um, clients come and are just like, we need help with spraying. We don't know what to do. And neutering mm -hmm. is the way. Um, they are less likely to run away from home due to um, hormonal urges and their urges um, to um, mate. And they are less likely to bite other humans and animals due to uh, uh, any other hormonal uh, rages or issues like that. Um, neutering is also prevents, um, of course, this severe cancer, so that can also help with benefits of their personality traits if once they become older or in sickly issues. Thank you for sharing that. I personally, I have a dog and he's, um, he's neutered. His name is Rex and he's, he's 13 now, but his personality has always been so tame. And we always joke that if anyone ever comes into our house, that's not welcome. He would still welcome that person. So <laughs> he's so sweet. Um, yeah. Rex. And that's something too. Yeah. We like to tell people that, um, neutering and staying is not going to change your pet's personality. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change them uh -huh. or make them lazy or gain weight because they're lazy now. It's it's not going to do any of those um, issues. It's, it's purely for um, some of their um, animalistic urges mm -hmm. use, per se instead of their person. So if, you're, if your dog is just a friendly dog and he's like, hey, uh -huh. you know, hey, strangers, the the money in the safe this way, that's going to be your pet. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm learning so much today. Thank you so much, Chris, for sharing all this. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone wants to bring in their animal to be spayed or neutered, what is the cost if they go to SNAP? Yeah, so um, cost, again, just depends on your um, your pet, their, their, um, their needs that day, the ages, of course, can also be... Um, can make a considerable difference. Uh, we do also have um, EPT programs that can help those who are on government assistance. So if um, listeners would just like to come into our clinic or uh, visit our website, snackus.org, um, there's a price list there and we can get started that way. Again, if they wanted to call or come into clinic, we can help get them um, a rough estimate and see what we can do for them, uh, for them and their personal pet, just because every pet's needs are different. Oh, that's really good to know. So people can prepare before they come in of how yes, much their yeah. cost could be. As far as our listeners, um, how can they support your organization? Yes. Yeah, so, um, of course, um, monetary donations are always welcome. We have appeals or fundraisers throughout the year. The, um, our current fundraiser is going to be our um, season of impactful change. Um, they can find that and donate at, the, at our link at snapus.org. Uh, we also have in-kind donations that uh, we benefit from. So in-kinds are our most needed items in our clinic as um, like gently used towels and blankets, um, clinic items and uh, office items that help offset our costs so we can focus our funds towards staying in neutering pets in our community. Okay, so in-kind and financial donations are appreciated. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us again, how to contact you if anyone needs assistance or if anyone is interested in contributing financially or in kind? Yes, of course, people can reach us at snapus.org on our contact page. There are um, several links where you can contact us. 
um, through management as well as our um, donation team. Uh, we also have our social media channels, Facebook, um, Instagram. Um, it is going to be our Facebook is a SNAP or State Neuter Assistance Program spelled out. Uh, we also have our Instagram, snap.us. And you can also um, uh, reach us at our clinic. So any of our four clinic locations, we have one in Houston, one in Pasadena, and two in San Antonio. Thank you so much. And before we go, Chris, for um, to our next segment, is there anything you would like to leave our listeners with? Yes, of course. Thank you to um, all listeners for listening in today and for anyone who have all of our donors. Um, we I'd also like to leave a short message at the end just to give a um, uh, pretext of who we, we are. Uh, we are able to provide and offer high-quality, affordable spay, neuter, and wellness services by limiting our practices. So if your dog or cat is ill or injured, please take him or her to a full-service veterinary clinic. Um, because SNAP's primary mission is uh, preventing animal homelessness and suffering and neglect resulting from overpopulation, we require all animals to be over the uh, six months of age to receive our wellness services. Um, we appreciate everyone who has tuned in today. We hope to hear and see from all of you at one of our clinics. Thank you so much, Chris Diaz of SNAP. It was really great to have you on today. Um, SNAPUS.org is the website if you would like to get information about SNAP. And they have four locations. And you can also reach them on social media. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Before we go to our next segment, we're going to talk about how this radio show, Amplified Houston, is coming to you. KPFT takes no advertising dollars at all, and almost every one of the people who work to bring you the shows are volunteers like me and our co-host, Bianca, who couldn't make it today. So please call 713-526-5738 to become a sustaining member today. We really need your support and Amplified Houston's mission is to bring organizations 